Whether your beer is in a bottle, can, or glass, kick back and relax. It's Better on Draft. And we are live episode number 215, I believe, Better on Draft podcast. As you can see in here, we are a full live virtual studio. I'm just talking to make sure that my mic works because uh, I've already fucked up this show enough. Uh, (laughs) As Dan laughs, you know what? I felt good because there's obviously another huge podcast out there called Pod Save America. And I was watching one of their episodes in the first two minutes they were talking and uh, had it on mute. So I'm like, well, I ain't the only one. (laughs) <laughs> so uh, with that in mind, I will start off with myself. Uh, you could join us again each and every week Fridays at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern over on uh, Facebook.com forward slash better on draft. Uh, join us in the chat. Will you talk to us and uh, entertain us? We're going to be playing, uh, as you noticed last week, game th- or segment three is going to be a game. The game will not be on the podcast. You can find it on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, you can also join us in the game as we will be playing the game at about 8 30 eastern every single friday while we are still doing this live um well live remote everyone away from each other the few things that i want to get off my chest don't forget to go to rally for restaurants buy some gift cards help out the community as well as i have a huge announcement huge huge announcement uh for those of you that go to go tip m.com g-o-t-i-p-e-m.com uh and uh donate give to a friend or random person it doesn't matter at least 25 dollars michigan beer box that's right the company that still won't die uh you can actually get a hoodie all you got to do is Give $25 to a friend in need, a family member, a uh, random person in a random state. Maybe look for someone with the same first name as you and be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to give you $25. I'm going to help you out because I know you're struggling right now. You're going to then take a screen cap of that $25. You're going to send it over to betterondraft at gmail.com. And we're going to mail you a Michigan Beer Box hoodie. And I tell you what, you can talk to Ed, me, Nick, Rob, those hoodies are so comfy, and especially because of the fact that it is snowing outside here in Michigan. Oh, it's <laughs> what? In April. Uh, yeah, we had about probably six to seven inches. Nothing really stuck. Uh, <laughs> it's already melted already. <laughs> yeah, it, it melted the second it hit the ground. That is for sure. Um, so again, $25 to anyone. Send the screen cap to betterondraft at gmail.com that you sent it. Uh, again, you can send money via PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo, depending on what they are accepting. And uh, we will send you a uh, hoodie. We'll work out with make sure we have uh, – it's limited supply. Um, we only have a certain amount because obviously Michigan Beer Box has folded. Rest in pieces. Rest in Pilsners, I should say. Um <laughs> And speaking of beer, um, I have got the New Holland Poets Brunch Stout to start off my day. Uh, I have definitely been enjoying this Friday. Had a few happy hours with some former coworkers, so I'm down a few beers. Uh, yeah. But I do plan on ending the night. Uh, I did finally <laughs> pick up the the 12 volt or 12 volt from Motor City Gas, which is distilled Axle Pale Ale. So oh, a oh beer that doesn't exist anymore into a whiskey. Uh, we're going to start off to my right, I guess would be here as I'm looking in the camera. Wendy, how you doing? What are you drinking? And uh, how's your week been? Um, well, it's been a hell of a week. <laughs> I'm super happy that the weekend's here. Um, I was inspired to go to my cellar because one of the um, beer groups that I'm a part of, Craft Beer and Body in Michigan, one of the girls posted, what is your favorite craft beer? And I had to go to my cellar to get a Trogues Mad Elf because Ooh. it's the only beer that I will drive an hour and a half to Ohio for on a regular basis. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> hey, what's Even during Ohio? a pandemic or? <laughs> well, no, because they only have it out a, a certain portion of the year. Oh, okay. But All right. in that couple months that it's out, I'll make at least two trips to get yeah. some. Nice. Very nice. All right. And uh, right below you, we got uh, Rob Robert. How you doing? Yeah, doing all right. Making it through the week. It's, it's been, uh, eh, you know, it, it's, it's been what you expect when you're in quarantine and stuck in your house and, you know, grounded for, you know, all of this <laughs> BS that's going on. Or, that's the truth. 
Yeah. So, you know, making it, doing, still working from home, uh, doing a bit more for uh, Sporkle now because uh, I, I'm now back to hosting trivia virtually. Um, looks like I'll be, be doing that twice a week. Uh, and also back to now writing questions for Sporkle uh, as I uh, officially uh, get back to my role as content writer as of yesterday. Uh, so that is uh, definitely keeping me busy. You know we what? Tried I tried to get into one of your trivia groups online, and it sold out pretty quick. That's because I'm a bad motherfucker. You gotta understand this. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta understand that my shows sell out. Uh, my Monday show, that my Monday show that is coming up, has has sold out as well. Um, they they haven't posted anything for Wednesday yet, so uh, keep an eye out on that. It'll show up. Uh, it should be Wednesday, seven o'clock, with Rob E. And yeah, those that they've they've increased the number of teams that can get in on it. Um, it used to be eight, but they only just increased it to nine. Um, it's it's still a little tricky to try and handle everything from home to to get all this stuff in. I have um, to ask, how do you handle cheaters? You don't. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, what do you what what is what am I supposed to do? Just like you know, get a. Hopefully, they have some other camera set up in her house that I can hack into to see if they're going online and looking things up. I mean, we, we asked them to not cheat. Um, and, and really, for, for what they're getting, they're getting the experience of doing the trivia. Um, it's not like the bar where we're giving away $20 and $30 gift cards. It, it's basically entries into a raffle to get a $100 gift card to um, the bar of your choice where we host Sporkle Trivia. So it's not a whole lot at stake, but it's really, it's just there so that like this, where people can get together with their friends and families, play trivia like they normally do when they go into the bars and hang out and have fun. It's, it's probably, it's the, really to break the monotony of staying at home. Yeah. That's, that's really what, what it is. It, that's what I'm hearing at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can only, like I said, I, I may have said this in the past, but you can only play so many video games at home and so many board games and puzzles. I don't know. You guys got Final Fantasy VII now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That'll give you a good 30, 40 hours to go. Yeah. It, I'm actually kind of milking yeah. it out right now, but that's another story. But. Yeah, same same <laughs> here. I, I'm taking that game very slowly, very slowly, and, and just enjoying, enjoying that whole experience. Yep. Don't look at me. I did not buy that game. That's for sure. I've been yeah, I don't own a PlayStation. <laughs> uh, I mean, I do own a PlayStation. I've actually been rocking some Tetris 99 lately. Nice. Um, it, it took me uh, a couple of hours to get back into uh, how good I was, and I am still pretty good at the game, so I'm really happy with it. Uh, Dan, what are you drinking over there? Hey, I've got a Foam Walker from Moonraker Brewing. It's an Imperial Coffee Nitro Stout. Wow. Rocking in that yeah. better on draft glass. Oh, yeah. such a good glass. <laughs> I've also got a, I haven't cracked yet. I got a white Russian Imperial here uh, from like, Sun Up. I was going to say, I feel like you've drank that on the show before. Yeah, all the, whenever I can. It's one of my favorite I was, beers. I was like, dude, time. like Sun Up, dude. I'm like, oh shit, Dan's in Phoenix. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I live like, about dude. five minutes away. Yeah, <laughs> pretty easy to get. Oh, <laughs> uh, what up, Captain? Nicholas, oh, you <laughs> yeah, I see what you're everyone's doing. like. Who? What's going on? How's it going? I'm all right. What are you? Uh, what are you drinking over there? Um, do my normal double fist like I always do, starting with a. I had to write the name down because I put the can downstairs. Uh, an Old Nation Special Copper or Special Hot Project Waimea. This is uh, one of their New Englands. It's a New England. I love, old, old. Nick, I love that Nick is very focused on proper glassware too. Old, na oh, old right, nation right. doing it. All my, a... all, my all my glassware is in a in a uh, storage pod somewhere right now. <laughs> no, I, that's old respect. That was, that was real respect. I was gonna say, yeah, old nation has a New England IPA. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah that's not M forty three. And then the other one I haven't cracked open yet. It's a cryo you could not. That's also their special hot project. I haven't opened it yet. That's well, the, uh, some of the cans that are uh, that are one of our other occasional guest hosts brought on one time for me so. well as you guys can tell on the video we do have someone that you've never seen before live on our show fuck this draft top thingy <laughs> jesus Why are you messing with that 
I have just drink, dude. Why are I, you wasting your time? It's 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 a fun party trick. That's basically all it is. Um <laughs> Uh, so he actually has been on the show, but that was because he helped us host a show over at the Shop Beer Co. in Tempe, Arizona, I believe is the correct city. Um, correct. But Eric from Tap That AZ, how you doing today? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. I, I'm, I'm digging this. A bunch of people who appreciate great beer and love to fucking swear. Hell yeah, I'm in. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah, we do. <laughs> well, you mentioned that you were uh, um, doing some homeschooling for your kids, so obviously you yeah. can't you can't curse at your job. Oh, I have, I have my my eight year olds. Like I'm telling mom, I'm like, I don't give a shit. Like go tell her. Like I'm I've had it. You know what? Tell you know what? I'll tell her. Don't tell her. I'll tell her for you. Exactly. I already texted her. That's why I wasn't paying attention. Uh, so it's, it's good, man. Let's. Uh, what are you drinking? Tell us. All right. So I got. Um, so. I live in North Phoenix, so Dan can tell you there's really not much in North Phoenix, right, mm-hmm. up until about the last year. So we had Front Porch Brewery opened up, and then Simple Machine opened up. A Simple Machine opened up in, like, January, um, and and then all this happened. So it's like, I'm like, if I finally got all – I got two good breweries <laughs> up by me, and then, you know, this shit happens. But they're they're busting ass, man. They're – these guys it, – it, it's, it's amazing what's going on across Arizona beer right now, um, which I'm sure it's, it's everywhere. Uh, but – so my boys from Simple Machine, they're still cranking out new beers. This is, uh, that's their logo. I love it. It's pretty pretty simple. It's got the basics on there. Uh, it's Kojo's Mojo. It's a Belgian blonde. So um, love it, man. I, it, I love the, I, I love Belgian styles. Um, I'm, I'm more into like sour, wild ale types. But Dan will tell you once again, we don't get many of those out in Arizona here. No. Nope. Uh, a few a few here and there. But um, so that's one of them. Um, and that is in my tap that AZ glass with the is uh, a mason jar that is a mason jar nice. it's, a, it's a small one yeah and when i got it uh the, the the glass guy was like yeah i don't really like those ones they break easy i'm like well then why didn't you tell me that before i ordered it dude come on that's <laughs> that's useful information uh but yeah so i got that with the tap stay awesome on the back and then nice. uh i've been saving this one uh for a special occasion so this is a special occasion this is uh birdfish brewery out of uh columbiana ohio so that's i grew up in ohio and uh, there was no breweries where I grew up. Great Lakes was the closest up in Cleveland. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. that Great Lakes was the closest that you grew up in Ohio. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well uh, Eastern Ohio, which is even – that's even the, wor- the worst part of Ohio. But uh, – but no, man. Um, well, so we I mean, ha- Cleveland's – well, that whole Market Garden area has exploded yeah. with beer. And, I mean, we're not even talking recently. That was like five years ago that, um, like, yeah. Market Garden Brewery opened. I still remember I went uh, I went to a wrestling show. I went to a pay-per-view over in Cleveland, and we went to the Market Garden. That's when I learned that Great Lakes Brewing is never open on Sundays. And uh, um, oh, that, was, that was the first day of uh, Johnny Manziel playing football. <laughs> Jeez. And uh, mm. with that, um, it was definitely a very interesting day to see a lot of people from Ohio, like, so happy, so excited for football, and then nothing. Like so they, they, You're uh, used to that. I mean, that's you're a Lions fan. Come on, be real. It's kind of the same thing. I mean, yeah. It's I've... not, though. Cleveland's <laughs> way worse. Like, it's like it's like a lot of my friends are Browns fans. I'm like, dude, just give up. Give up. Like, just I don't know on. if it's worse. I'd say they're about the same. At least uh, Cleveland's yeah. on an upswing. You can only relive Bernie Kosar so many times. It's yeah. Just done. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, the worst part too was then they and then Art Modell moves the team to Baltimore and they win and the then and then two Bowl. years later they win the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Luckily, my mom grew up in Pittsburgh, so so I, where I grew up was right between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Six. So I was Six. exactly Six. man. I was I was lucky. I was I was lucky. All my Robert, are you like, singing Iron Maiden right now? Yeah. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> so anyways let, let me wrap this one up because special shout out to these guys these guys really kind of started a, the the boom in in northeastern ohio um th- these guys are great birdfish brewing and they just closed their uh their original location uh you know obviously everybody's struggling right now so so they had to shut down the the one location now they're down to just their production facility but uh i want to give a shout out to these guys this is blackbeard's delight it is a bourbon barrel aged russian imperial stout oh, usually yeah. not usually not my style and and I, I i saw a few boners go up right there when i said that but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but 
but last last little plug here i'm gonna open this with my uh my 22 millimeter uh shell that was made into a beer opener i feel like oh, wow. we saw Look one of that. those when uh veteran beer co Veterans. came onto the show yeah, yeah. Bottle breacher I, I, bottle yeah. breacher yep i yep. know someone who Arizona. has someone we all know has one she got it as a gift for being in the wedding i was like damn i should steal this <laughs> <laughs> I, I know Grand Armory over there in Ludington. Um, Grand Armory is not in Ludington. No, Grand Haven. I'm sorry. Is it Grand Haven? Neither of them are in Ludington. <laughs> um, well, somewhere on the west side. Who gives a shit? <laughs> it's all the same, right? It's all the same. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah. They, made some, they made something smaller scale, something like that. So. Well, as yeah, these guys are, I was going to say, these guys are in Tucson. These guys are right in Tucson, Arizona. Um, they were on uh, Shark Tank. Mark Cuban's one of their investors, somebody else. They etched the tap that AZ in there for me. Awesome. Um, had them on, I think it was ep- episode 66. Uh, but, dude, I was always a fan of their cool shit. And then someone's like, dude, you know they're in Tucson? I'm like, no shit. So, so yeah, <laughs> we did a little tour and they, they made this for me. So this is my favorite nice. thing to open beers with. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to uh I'd have to check because obviously I know the um that the brewery actually doesn't exist anymore, but uh Veteran Beer Company, when they came onto the show for uh whatever episode that was, obviously it doesn't show up when I search real quick. Um <laughs> Uh, it sounds like a sorting issue, Ken. What the I, fuck, you man? know, I need a better SEO guy. Um, <laughs> obviously, I'm I'm pay, I'm paying the guy to do my SEO absolutely nothing, and that's because it's me. Um, <laughs> Your time is money, Ken. Your time is. Money. You know what? I I 100% agree, and it looks like uh, there we go. Episode 81. Jesus, uh, three years ago, ago. Three years ago, almost to the date. Um, so I believe we had that. I don't think we had video of that, but there's probably a photo somewhere on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, anywhere. I don't know. But with that in mind, uh, I kind of want to go a little bit into the news to kind of get your guys' opinions on a few topics, because obviously the big one, as the news is slowed down a lot, there is still one thing, and that's the courts that are still working. And um, the figure. Stone is Not seeking really, uh, Stone is seeking $1 billion. That's B billion dollars kind of like uh one constellation or excuse me not one constellation one ballast point it's seeking the total of one ballast point uh for (laughs) trademark that much (laughs) trademark infringement um so based on the uh, the information, Stone's trademark has uh, obtained incontestable status, and Stone has a valid and legal protectable mark. Uh, a jury could find that Miller Coors had been willfully uh, using Stone's mark to suggest a connection between Keystone Light and Stone Brewery, and such actions have created confusion in the promotion of Keystone Light and Stone. And there was a 14-year gap in Keystone's evidence of pur- uh, purported historical uses of Stone's. So there's plenty of information here. Um, we'll kind of go around the horn. I'll start with our guest. Um, Eric, what do you think about that? Where do you think the, uh, the, is there a disconnect? Do you think that something could happen out of this? I mean, we're just kind of all guessing at this point. Well, I, I, when, I, when, I, when I look at this, what I think about is it's pretty cool to see the tables turned, right? Because usually it's big corporations that are, that are bullying with money, right? Like we can just, we can just use our money to get whatever the fuck we want to get. It's right? like Carol Baskin yep. going over after uh, Joe yeah. exotic. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, yeah, you might have a valid point, but my money is going to be what, what wins this where stones kind of flexing a little bit uh, saying, Hey, we've got the money to, to do this, or at least we're acting like we have the money. <laughs> you know, we, don't, <laughs> yep. we don't know what they want, but I like it, man. I like that stone is, um, I saw somebody uh, post the other day. They said, you know, they, they had, it was like a meme of, of like, you know, this is my face when people at a party try to convince me that stone is craft beer. I'm like, wait a fucking second. Like <laughs> it's, it's basic. And if someone says, Hey, I drink craft beer. And the only thing that they drink is stone. I can kind of see that line, but dude, stone is, fucking hardcore man those dudes are they're in it right i mean it's a business it, it, it's a business but i think stone have... falls in that og category that a lot yeah. of people don't consider mm-hmm. them craft beer because they've just been around for so long That's i think say, they've been around a really long time 
Yeah. You're talking same same with Sam Adams, Dogfish Head, uh, New Belgium, which I mean, New Belgium just got bought out. So obviously that's not necessarily yeah. the case anymore. Yeah, um, one of the first yeah. ones that I actually recognized, like, OK, this isn't like your your major company here. Like, who's well, Stone? Never heard of them. And, and, and <laughs> kind of on the lines of Stone and the beers that they make, Sierra Nevada is going to be right up there. Um, yeah with the, the amount of time that happened, like the amount of time that they've been a business as a craft brewery and have gone through all the downturns of craft brewing. Um, you know, Nick, do you think that there is a, a case to be had here? Obviously we've talked about it before. Um, and I think the show's kind of, uh, uh, you know, we kind of go through cycles. We talked about the whole ABI InBev merger. Um, do you think that there's an issue? No, I, I, you know, I think Stone, you know, if there's, if they're just not bringing this up 14, not, not Stone particularly, but Keystone bringing this up so many years after the fact, and you're just now having a problem with it, I, I would think that Stone has a case to, you know, kind of push their, you know, use their weight a little bit and not let these big giants try and throw their money around because unfortunately at the end of the day, you know, the one who has the most money is going to probably come out on top of the, the lawsuit, as I learned in Tiger King just last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Dan, I, I know when you and I chat, we definitely have very interesting perspectives and different, like, I think we both feel the same way, but come out with different outcomes. What do you think about it between Stone and Miller Coors? I don't know. When did they even start calling their beer Stone? Last time I drank keystone it was in omaha sometime like 15 20 years ago so remember to to catch up they've always called it keystone but the whole point is is that they made stone so prominent on the logo that you have to see stone like it's impossible to not see the word stone on keystone um i'm gonna actually they changed they changed the design too they changed the design where it just it just said stones like it's right i think it said stones not stone like keystone like a stone it's like right am i right it's, yeah i'm actually right. i just it's, looked up a yeah. picture of it yeah, yeah it's, it's it's really close to that because it you, says the key is still there it's just really really small yeah but let's be real yeah. it's not like you're naming your beer after some small brewery out there or using a similar name to a small brewery you know who stone brewing is if you're in the beer industry I mean, you got to think there's something going on there. Someone's going to say something. I mean, we had the issue, Eric will tell you, with Fates had a problem using a name from someone in Colorado, I think. So, yeah. I mean. You know the whole story of that? that, ter- the, that I don't know the whole turned, story, uh, but I know they got the name or the rights to use the name, which is good. But Well, they, got the, they bought the rights to the name like two months before the company went, went bankrupt. Um, oh jeez! I, I actually broke the news to the GM at, at Fate. I was just like, dude, I saw the, the headline today that uh, that Fate in Colorado went bankrupt. He's like, are you fucking serious? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, man. <laughs> he's like, I gotta go. Uh, he's like, my day has just changed. So basically, oh, geez. yeah, man. It's it's a it's a crazy story. It was yeah, but it went from Fate to Mick Fate back to Fate, different ownership, suing. I think there was some sort <laughs> of like adultery. There were tigers involved. I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> Involved. probably that would make yeah. sense yeah but if you're gonna use a big name you know there's a big brewery out there that's distributed everywhere and everyone knows it with the name stone you're gonna use a name like that something's gonna come down the pipe you might right. think you're too big but a court might see otherwise and it, I mean, apparently I'm, they have i mean looking at the packaging i just google search keystone beer designs so it's like they don't really make the like stone pop out all that much i mean they like some if, of the packaging, they'll have like a can behind the word stone. It doesn't really pop up as big if, as if you, it would emphasize stone that much. If you look at some of the photos, and I showed a lot of the photos to the live chat, um, there are points where you can hold it. And um, I don't have a empty beer, but I have – I'll just grab this one random beer. But it's like if I held the beer like this, you would just straight see the word stone. stone. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's, if we made a beer called Sam's, like, come on, guys, yeah. you know, you know what you're doing, <laughs> right? I mean, Stan that's Adams. I'm yeah. Stan, Stan Adams. Stan Adams. <laughs> Stan Adams. <laughs> Be like, it's not the same name. Like, come on, you know Just what's brother. gonna come down. And then, then, step brother. And then it's hey, two, two D's, two D's by the way. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at old commercials, they've been calling their beer Stones for a while, like Hold My Stone, but. 
even if you did that as a nickname, if you never marketed it that way until this point, I think that changes things. Well, yeah. I, I think we're kind of getting into a, a territory and, you know, uh, again, this is where my, my thought and theory, like I'm, I'm against it, but I understand it. Um, when someone mentioned in regards to, if you go to a bar and this was, this was when we were talking about trademarks for uh dogfish head and, um, uh, what's the Florida keys brewing. Cause they have the hogfish. And if you go to a loud bar and you say, Hey, I'll have a hogfish," and someone can misinterpret what you're saying in a loud bar that sells both, then that's what happens. But again, they didn't really see, um, like dogfish head didn't even know about it until obviously hogfish tried to, or, uh, Florida keys tried to trademark hogfish. And it's not it, it's not malicious in the intent to where because hogfish is a type of fish that you can catch in the Florida Keys. So there's a huge like you can you can take you know from one point to the second point and you can connect these two dots. Whereas if I were to go through and I would make like dogfish, but I'd spell it P I you know P H I S H or something like that, like then you know that I'm trying to like fuck some up, like screw something Jeez. up. Be like, no, the band made this beer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like a DAWG too, like the Browns, right? Yeah. It, was a, it was a Browns collaboration. It was a Browns yeah. collaboration. That's, that's two Cleveland Brown references on the same show. What's going on? <laughs> I'm going to keep them coming now that we got this rolling. So. Like, yeah, well, we got Freddie Kitchens made this show, so you got plenty of time. Hey, I mean, they were a dynasty. They, they, they were a dynasty in the 50s with the Lions. That's true. That's true. Nearly, that nearly the their football team. They, they oh, yes. <laughs> thank you, Wendy, for joining the conversation. They are team. My goodness. Hey, what is this clump I'm that just I just kidding. got on my? What is that? That came out of my bottle of beer. Is oh, that my... oh, what is that? oh that's <laughs> that's, the... that's a beer that I don't drink. That's for sure. That's a, that's that a drain pour one? beer. It's a drain pour. It, what? What you say, is Wendy? It from the barrel aged one. Yeah. Yeah, it's just sugars. Okay, all right, oh, good. I, I wasn't that grossed out. Like I've <laughs> I've drank a lot worse stuff. Yeah, yeah. I it looked mean, worse on camera. I know. It's like, hey, what's right. this brown? What's this brown slimy stuff on my finger? Like, ah, get, him get him out of here. Speaking oh, of okay. uh, drinking a lot of worse beer, obviously. Yeah. Oh, oh my God! There's something in there. Did you guys see that on his tongue? I, I did. Oh. oh, yeah, I'd it's probably drain. Yeah, we're we're, we're 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 drain pouring that. I'll let you. That I'll, yeah. I'll 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 let you do that yeah, while we um. Woo. Yeah, I'll I'll yeah. let you. Not that live. Oh my gosh, birdfish, you <laughs> motherfuckers! If you're watching this, I don't. I I will make sure to tag them <laughs> and see what the hell. Maybe I'll try Man. to get you some some uh, gifts as a. Uh, as you try to like, was that a tapeworm like what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah that's that's definitely i'm it's i'm lost beer it's a weight loss beer because you don't drink it so you don't drink the yeah. calories oh yeah. man oh my god no oh, no bueno that that's for sure for the cat maybe like oh, i don't know let's move on what, let's what, move yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> what, where was that beer from again I don't want to say. I don't want to take say. another <laughs> sip. Let's see how it is. It tastes really good, actually. Like I said, that's not usually my style, but it's pretty good. I mean, it's sanitary, right? It's beer. How long have you, yeah, been how long have you had it? I've had it for probably a year, year and a half. Should be okay. That should be yeah. fine. I think it's I mean, probably just stuff well, coming together. It's not. Like, well, so here's, I'm gonna drink it. I'm I don't know the technical it. terms. I just like to drink beer. Here's here's the thing, too. and we'll <laughs> we'll we'll kind of go through, and uh, you know, I, I'll 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 wait for Eric to go last, and I'll start with Wendy. But this is, I think, it's the same thing as if somebody, you know, you're you're trying to protect your your target audience you're trying to protect your business but if somebody were come in and say like um maybe they named a podcast best on draft hmm. and they spelled it d-r-a-u-g-h-t too like they you know if that's kind of purposely going in with malicious intent whereas i think stone brewing was not coming in with malicious intent but when keystone came in to change their logo that's when things change. So say there was better on draft and best in draft or whatever, but then best in draft decided to change their logo to that. Um, <laughs> but just change it a little bit. It's a vertical banner. Yeah. Or a horizontal banner. <laughs> horizontal. Oh, no, I meant the, 
the it's a drop. Yeah. It's a dropped mic. Oh, it's the, oh. gotcha. <laughs> like gotcha. that. I think those are the kinds of things that would change it. What were we gonna say, Eric? I have a question. Actually, I've been I dealt with a situation like this recently. Um, all right, so what's it called? Tap let, my AZ. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, you know what's funny is. Uh, Okay. We've been working on a food brand, right? So we, we made a lot of good connections with chefs and, and the food industry out here in Arizona. So we're going to launch a food brand. And I was like, what about eat that ass? Right? Eat that easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> and people lo- like, people are like, that's actually really cool. I'm like, yeah, but I don't want people thinking of buttholes when they think of food, <laughs> you know, Arizona food. So, yeah. Uh, so we went with the taste of AZ. <laughs> so, <laughs> but here, no. So here's a question I have for you guys. Good choice. I want your guys' opinion. So let's let's say that uh, that this logo gets sent to a merchandise company, right? I, mm-hmm. I, I create this logo, send it to okay. a merchandise company, say, hey, can you do some mock-ups, kind of show me, what, you know, what would this look like on a black shirt? What would this look like on a white shirt, right? Mm-hmm. Six months later, that same company, I never I never print the shirt. I never put it into, into circulation. Like, it never gets used. I just wasn't happy with the logo. I wanted to spruce it up a good bit. Six months later, that merchandise company puts out their own logo, uh, for Arizona beer, and it looks like this. Oh, oh boy! Oh, you think? Uh, yeah. <laughs> because I've heard both sides. I've heard both sides. Uh, that you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't have an opinion. I, yeah. I. There's two that's, for comfort right there. Yeah, that's yeah. Too close. yeah okay. that's, right. I thought. I thought. Yeah, because if it was if it was a random come across this, but if it was from the person you sent it to. And then that, yeah, that, that a little bit different. Well, yeah, you could. If it was sent to a merchandising company, right. it wasn't like just a random, hey, look at this logo. Sure. Yeah. Like right. you were contracting them. Yeah. Even if yeah, I was going to say that's from them, you were contracting their services for something. I agree. I, I, I feel like there's definitely a potential for a, a lawsuit in regards to, to that kind of thing. Cause that just seems like you're. You've definitely, you gave them the idea and then they just tweaked it a little bit. Yeah. It, it'd be like making, mm-hmm. here's my better on draft, except now instead of, you know, like brown, gray, and black, it's going to be blue, gray, and black. <laughs> Dude, that's <laughs> innovation right draft. there. That is a- <laughs> <That's right. laughs> for, yeah. For, well, thank, for, you. For- <laughs> thank you guys for that input because it's been hard to get uh, non biased input uh, locally, right? Because it's, yeah. So thank you. Well, thank you. There's 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 a lot of things that I think there's there's some icon iconic things that you can you know it's it's hard to to go across like for instance the the Chicago flag the Chicago flag is a very iconic flag that Arizona flag I believe that's what the sun rising that's a yep, very yep, iconic yep. flag in Absolutely. the sense to where yeah. I think a lot of people use it a lot of people use it when it involves Arizona type products so yep. you're not really you know just because you use the flag that's not really a, a thing but because you use the hop cone with the flag and mm. then they just kind of made it, you know, a little better tweaked it. Oh yeah. They, 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 they yeah. did what you wanted. <laughs> yeah, they, yes, they exactly. literally did what you asked for, but yeah, then claimed yeah. it as their own. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean that All right, I got to go. Hold on. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's can wait. I, I will definitely, uh, Dan and I, um, actually know someone who's really smart in regards to trademarks. Um, oh. Kristen, Oh yeah, um, she, she deals with it all the time. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll definitely get you some contact info. We'll do like a little intro email, um, and yeah. just be like, you know, hey, uh, this is a friend of ours. Just check it out, see what you can do, and she'll she'll definitely be able to tell you if you have a leg to stand on, perfect, or perfect. she'll Honestly, or she'll tell you no. <laughs> yeah, well, honestly, like for me, it's more of just a matter of like, ah, oh, shit. Le- lesson learned. I need to, I need to keep shit more tight to myself, you know, and and things like that. Um, and th- but this is the one I want to get. Like, tap that AZ. Like that people, people buy the merchandise because of the name. I'm like, oh yeah, we're a craft beer podcast. So like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. Like, I don't care either. Just buy <laughs> the shirt. Like, yeah, you know? Just buy it. Yeah. Just buy yeah. it. <laughs> well, that's 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 the thing is that you definitely have a name, a pun that it doesn't necessarily need to be a. You can put it on. On beer shit you could put it on caps and fu- like you you definitely have the name whereas we're kind of stuck with our, our logo right here with the micro <laughs> i mean i logo though i i, yeah. logo. I, mean, I love it on a, on a glass it looks pretty oh, good it works good that is it beautiful. works great 
We yeah. can't do much of anything with our state abbreviation. I mean, just like well, my so bits. you mean like uh, you're talking well, like about my beer box. Well, I mean, we got that. That's that's the thing is that's why like the name of the show is going to be you know this episode I should say is going to be called Tap My Az. Oh, <laughs> I like it. I see what I you like did. Oh, well done. Um, well, so also. I was gonna let me say this real quick too. I'm in I'm in Arizona where there's a lot of Spanish speaking people, so I thought it was me beer box, right? <laughs> I know, you know, I have, I have Yo I soy have beer box. Yeah, so with anyone, yeah, everyone thought it was me beer box when they saw yeah. it because yeah. exactly for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> are are you saying it's the, the main beer box? <laughs> main. Yeah. Hey, but shout out to you guys for that. Dude, that was a that was a great idea. That was uh, I'm sad to see that that went away, but dude, I I love the I love the the chances and the the innovation that you guys are are are, are doing. And uh, what do they what do they always say? Shout out to Matt you're, you're Bush. Not, yeah. <laughs> if you're not if you're not failing a few things, you're not trying hard enough. So That's you, true. Uh, shout out to you guys yes. for that. Absolutely. So yes, we got. I know Matt Matt Bush was in the chat earlier. So shout That's, out to Matt Bush. Like That's Mike a Matt Rob Bush said. Matt Bush joint right there. Yeah. Yes. Sir. I don't know Matt Bush, but I want to meet him now. I heard his name <laughs> six times. You might in the last you might regret seconds. that, but. <laughs> <laughs> um. We got a couple minutes before we take a break. Eric, why don't you tell us about your show, what you do, what um, you know, what can they expect going in, how many episodes are you in, um, that kind of stuff. Yeah, man. So I, I'm at like 175 now. Um, counted episodes. Dude, I've been real bad at like tracking shit. Like I'm like, oh, like 60 episodes in. Maybe I should start numbering them. So there's between <laughs> like a like 175 and, and 200. Um, really, it, it's been really cool because – the main thing I, I live in Arizona and the weather's just beautiful, like, you know, eight, nine months out of the year. So I want to be get nice. Out. It, <laughs> it is. It is. And I can especially appreciate it because I moved from Ohio where it was just a, a bubble. Oh, yeah. I of, feel you on many levels. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I like growing up there. Um, I love living in Arizona. So. So, yeah, for the past three years, been traveling around the state. Uh, we got, I got a little mobile setup that I just set up in the brewery, set up in the tap room, uh, like you guys had seen, and just tell the story of Arizona beer. Um, so I don't, I don't get super deep into, you know, uh, you know, beer releases or anything like that. It's more about, like, the story of, like, what the hell's going on with Arizona beer? Because, dude, there's some really – there's a lot of things Arizona beer is involved with huge for – like um, conservation, sustainability, uh, whether it's a company that's changed, you know, the way Faro stuff to preserve river water. And it's, dude, there's a lot of stories. There's a lot of stories to tell. They go out every Wednesday. Um, at this point, I'm putting out two or three a week uh, just because I can do it on, instead of having to travel everywhere. You know? So <laughs> right. it makes, makes it a lot more convenient um to get the people that that, that i want to get on the show uh but we also started getting into food too so we've made a lot of good connections the whole and dan could probably tell you this the whole scene here in arizona food uh beer uh whiskey spirits all, coffee everything is coming up together it's it's a yep. young young industry um we have a chef from from tempe that would, was just the runner up on the food network um I always get the name of it wrong. It was like the Vegas chef prize fight. Uh, he almost won. Um, so I thought you were cool, just man. making up a name of a show, <laughs> no. but that's a real <laughs> thing. Oh, dude, no. This So this dude's awesome. So I had him on a Instagram live a couple weeks ago, and I kept joking with him. I'm like, because it's Vegas chef prize fight. And so I kept saying, dude, you're doing so good on the fa on the on the knife fight show. I kept calling the it the, the knife fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so he was – he, oh no 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 not the night fight no we're gonna get in trouble copy for copyright infringement just kind of joking so i kept saying it and the next day my wife's like i think he felt uncomfortable when you said that so i googled it and it's like an esquire cooking show called vegas like chef knife fight so it was like the same like kind of the same name so uh but no jeff kraus uh from uh crate bar here in tempe just we, we just had somebody that won the James Beard Award uh, chef out here. There's a lot of like foraging chefs, which is awesome. Like we've gone with chefs like in the middle of the wilderness and they've foraged food right there and cook it. And I eat it and I'm like, this is actually pretty fucking amazing. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not like you're eating grass like and, and rock and shit. kebabs or what are we <laughs> talking about? <laughs> oh man. It's, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing. I tell them all the time. I'm like chefs. I would die out of here. I would die out here. Like, there's food everywhere i'm like you're full of shit 
Well, well I, I mean, I got my, my, my sister lives out there, so she has definitely been sharing some stories um, about the good food and the good beer. She lives in Mesa, and uh, my dad's out there. He lives in Queen Creek. Oh, nice. Dude, Queen Creek, that's cool because Queen Creek is like – it's far. That's the thing about Arizona that a lot of people don't realize is shit is spread out. Right? It's spread yeah. out like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. I mean, you've got the Grand Canyon. An hour, two hours south of that is Flagstaff. And then two hours south of that is Phoenix. Two hours south of that is, is, is Tucson. So that's it. Like, and everything in between is just yep. tumbleweeds and shady shit. You know? so, and in between <laughs> there and that and the other, the, the PGA store is in between. And you got yeah, two yeah. lane roads to get between uh, it all. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what's really cool is, is all these places like Arizona wilderness is, is they're pulling ingredients from like the desert. Like um, I interviewed a chef the other day and, and he told me that the Sonoran desert is the most biodiverse um, ecosystem in the world. I'm like, Oh, I don't know how to disprove you. Um, and, you know, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but it, yeah, it's awesome, man. Uh, but uh, you were saying Rob about queen Creek. So down in queen mm -hmm. Creek, they have a, like a hundred plus year old farm that's growing like wheat that not only is made for like that breweries are using it, but uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of Chris Bianca, one of the best like pizza makers in the country, he uses yep. the Norman white wheat. So there's a lot of integration between food and beverage and like agriculture in Arizona, which is, which is awesome, man. That's, that's what, there's a lot of stories to tell. So people right. are like, dude, there's only 110 breweries. How are you going to keep going? I'm like, I'll, I'll make shit up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All those 110 like breweries stories, are on the man. upswing though, too. I mean, I the really what? feel like the, the beer out here is on the upswing. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I get, we I get the guys. We hit 110 breweries at once too. You know, I give them a lot of like shit. 400? Yeah, they're close. Like, uh, yeah, two thousand four. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's crazy. it's it's definitely you know, and that that's the thing we kind of talked about. And being uh, you know, formerly in the restaurant industry, a lot of people are talking about a thirty three percent or so of restaurants won't exist here in six months. Um, yeah, and yeah. I think a lot of restaurants will, um, you know, restaurants can easily be repackaged by someone with money. Whereas breweries cannot, you know, if it, you can have money and get a piece of shit brewery, like we we've seen, we've seen some breweries come and go in the state and they just, they come, they go because the beer is not good and you can't just come in here. There, there's no way to come in here without that. But we've also realized like you could be a really good brewer and still not make money. We had, sure. We had Old Nation on, and Old Nation was on the cusp of going under before M forty three. Yeah. Um, and this guy has as a brewery doesn't necessarily have to mean you have the best beer. Oh no, not at all. But yeah, it, at it, all. It, it's a good point, Wendy. Yeah. It there's there's a lot of it, and we've talked about how a lot of breweries, and I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but a lot of breweries out here in Michigan to be successful, you need to be that local tap room. You need to be that local, not dive bar, but that local bar. That's where yeah. everyone who lives in that city goes to that bar. They go to, um, like, that's that's where they go nightly. They don't go to the dive bar. They don't go to the place for, you know, dollar hams. Um, yeah. They're literally going to, you know, the, the local right. brewery. Wait, where you can get a ham for a dollar? I mean, we used to go to a place where you can get a ham for a quarter. For a quarter. No, not a beer. Yeah. Like, dude, I don't give a shit about oh. the beer. I want a fucking dollar ham, <laughs> <Hey>, man. <laughs> <laughs> said, I, I got five of them. I was like, you can, you can say what you want about me hoarding. I'm hoarding all the hams, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I did. Hams. So for, for Easter, I did get an 11 pound ham for 10 bucks. So I was going to say, I mean, yeah, it's, my, it's, my, it's, it's close. Yeah. My, my mother, that, there's about to be a meat shortage. Yeah, it was true. Yeah. My mother brought us a ham that um, for Easter, like after Easter, she was like, oh, yeah, we have this all this extra ham that you can give you guys. So she brought it all cut up, ready to go. First piece that I eat, ate, and I haven't had ham in a while, salty as fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> Holy Good, hell. Yeah. Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, what, Ken, I was going to say, I was going to say one thing, too. You were talking about how, just one thing. That's um, all you get. <laughs> all right. Shit. Hold on. Give me a second. Make some notes here. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh it was not taper room. that's all i want to say it was not a taper how's the beer by the way is it still drinkable <laughs> it's good man it's good like i'm i'm still drinking it. i don't care uh well so here here's the thing uh and this is a lesson that i learned from from a like a content creator uh side of things is dude for the longest time i'm like dude if i just make good shit if i just make good shit it'll go out there and, and, and it'll take off right and through that 
through that tenacity and hard work, it's gotten me further than, than I would have been. But my partnership with my, my business partnership, I'm 41 years old. My business partner's 23 and way more mature than me. He understands <laughs> business, but he's great because he understands the business side of it. He's like, dude, that's great. That's, these are great ideas. How, the, how, are we gonna, how can we sustain this? And he's not like a business guy like, hey, how are we going to get all the money out of this? He's like, dude, how are we going to make this? we want to make this into a career like how do we do this and he's really good at that so i think with a lot of these restaurants and breweries the ones that are gonna that are gonna have the highest chance of making it through are the ones that understand hey this is a business right we're not we can make the best beer in the world but if we don't understand how to budget our uh, our money at this point if we don't know how to spend the right amount of money or time towards marketing now's more time than ever that you gotta you gotta have all your shit in a row you know i i agree with you to an extent and i'm going to counter it with the fact that as much as it is a business you need to stay on top of business trends um if you look at Mm -hmm. baffin baffin their number one seller is their mango pale ale which is called mango unchained but it's silent the ms silent (laughs) Um, but the thing is is that yes that was their number one seller but the second that they made a new england ipa that was their number one seller which is wicked spot um Mm -hmm. these things happen where you have to follow trends you have to make those beers you can't especially now you cannot be like oh i'm never gonna make that kind of beer i'm never gonna make an ipa or i'm never gonna make a a bourbon barrel aged like these are things that you just cannot do anymore like you are when when we come out of this and you know we'll say in a year and i'll I'll, we'll do uh 420 2021 um when that episode comes out you're gonna do what if you listen i'm gonna say it um i don't think we're gonna be at 300 breweries in the state of michigan that is your number then what what what's your i guess i mean under 300 is my number i think that's a pretty good you think it'll lose that many oh 100 i mean i mean because i mean you're talking about what we're we're at what 370 374 well if you go to closer to 400 if you go to mibeermap.com or mebeermap.com you're welcome (laughs) is it is it dot como como uh (laughs) you can go to mibeermap.com you can actually figure it out uh obviously i logged in without the uh the edit credentials so it's not going to give me the number (laughs) uh there you go (laughs) Uh, here we go. We have currently 370 open. Big ups to Bill Carney, who is in the chat, who updates this map, who is the one that runs everything. Uh, we have Bill, here's to you, buddy. We have a uh, fifth. So we have 370 with seating, another 21 without seating. So we have 391 in the state and 57 licenses to open. What do you mean without seating? Like just production facilities? Production only. Okay. Yeah. So we, we have some breweries like, um, uh, like Founders has a production only facility. Grand Armory does. Uh, Jolly Pumpkin, Odd Side, uh, Beggars, B Nectar only has a production only facility. American Brewers Inc., which I don't even know what the hell that is. Um, New Holland. New Holland, thank you. Uh, New Holland is awesome. And production that, facility. They and have trikes, it's fun. That's why we pay. Yeah, uh, to ride the trikes on the <laughs> tour, though. They get upset. So yeah, so these are the the reason we did this is because we wanted to count them. But the those who are going to mibeermap.com, um, we don't want you to go there trying to drink beer and trying to pull. Uh, I think her name was Emily, the girl that went to every single brewery in 2018. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So wow. yeah, hit all 300 something breweries, including uh, I think Founders Detroit opened on like Christmas Eve or something like that, and made it to that one too. Jeez. So Damn. her rules, they had to be a member of the Michigan Brewers Guild when she started her tour. Oh, so she didn't go to all Ooh. of them. So she didn't so, go to the one you went to, Ken, in the middle of the woods or whatever. It the was. Blair Witch Brewery, uh, Michigan yeah. Brewing Brewery Works. Brewery. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That I'll, I'll like sh- some That's where you get tapeworm beer, right? Yeah. There, no, so <laughs> the, the, the beer was solid. The whiskey was good. But I took a photo of me where I was in my car, sent it to people because I said, if I die, yeah. <laughs> this is where I am. Um, it's right outside of Old Nation. It's it's close to Old Nation. It's the guy Bobby Mason's gig. He uh, used to own Michigan Beer Co. 
Oh, sorry. No comment. No comment from <laughs> no. anybody. Like, shit. Yeah. No. no. I, I need to. I need to. Island, moment there island up moment. north. Man. No, this this is over in Williamston. This no. this is literally right by Old Nation and Ellison, like halfway in between. I actually uh on our way to uh, Brewery Four Two Four's event last year, the winner of March Draftness. Um, my girlfriend and I we stopped there as one of our stops because at that time I was still pretty heavy, like hard into keto. So they, I knew they did whiskey. So I'm like, well, I can go there for whiskey. I can go to Ellison. I can go to New Holland. So <laughs> the places I picked, I needed to make sure it still had uh, um, liquor. That's for sure. But speaking of, you know, Eric, you were talking about mixing in food and beer. And obviously, we've had food on the show. We've had liquor, wine, nearly everything in kind of like the restaurant industry. Um, do you guys have like a White Labs out there, like a yeast cultivator that kind of does something special with a um, food and beer program? Mm, there's a lot of uh there's a lot of collaborations between chefs and and brewers out here so there's nothing like that specifically but uh helton brewery just did i would say just did like several months ago um a produce company reached out to them saying hey like we provide produce to all of these chefs across the valley would you be down to make a beer so you got these six chefs that are just badass chefs in the same room, dude. The, the ingredients they were trying, like one of the guys wanted to do blood in the beer, <laughs> like Ooh, a blood oh sausage, yeah. right? Like a blood sausage type of thing. Good um, Polish beer. Yeah, I was gonna say like a little Chinese beer, yeah. well, a little, a little duck was, blood beer. Yeah, <laughs> this is well, delicious. Oh man, dude, you've seen the shit I drink. I would, I would. Drink well, here it, we yeah. go. Like, here yeah. we go. I got the alliteration is ready to go. The Chinina check yeah. pills. Cause you got the CZ CZ. Yeah. Uh, wow. yes. So yeah. So they got together. Uh, they created a carrot sour, which the brewer, wow. Brian. So Brian Helton is one of the most, uh, he was at like 20 years at like rock bottom. Like, so he was a corporate brewer, but very, very scientific, very, very much by the book. His Pilsner is one of the best, if not the best Pilsner in the state. Uh, he's been brewing that since day one. Uh, but they did this uh, carrot sour. And everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like a carrot sour? And it came out and it was amazing, dude. Like it was, it was really good. So there's a lot of a lot of collaborations. Arizona Wilderness has done a lot of collaborations with local chefs. Uh, there's a marshmallow creator out here, like people that make marshmallows, like craft marshmallows. Uh, they did like a marshmallow um, milkshake IPA. So there's a lot of collaboration, uh, just really between. I'm like, curious hey, how much how much did that marshmallow IPA cost? Because I want to tell you something. Because I know we're going to be letting you go here in a few minutes. But how much? I'm going to join that... back on. I'm going to join back on. So I, I I've I was I was open to negotiate my schedule, aka tell my kids to go fuck themselves. So, uh... <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what? Then let's <laughs> let's let's reset. Um, cause I was kind of extending this just so we could get you here for the whole hour. Let's Thanks, reset. Yeah. We're going to play some music. I'm going to have everyone mute themselves on zoom. Um, this, the break is about eight to 10 minutes. So we will be right back with the better on draft podcast. And we are back. Episode one or two, 15. Jesus, we've been doing this for a while. Yeah. Uh, Dan, you might have still been there at one fifteen. I think I was. Pretty sure. Uh, we are back. Welcome, everyone. I'm glad you still uh, made it. Eric, thank you for selling, telling your kids to go fuck off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, now, uh, prior to the show, I obviously, I uh, shot you a message. And I'm like, you know, hey, what do you want to talk about in regards to news? Um, so I'm going to give you kind of this opportunity. Um, well, I'm going to let you think about it for a second. What's everyone drinking? Well, you can kind of, you know, I, I put this on you. I don't want to make it make it look good. So, uh, Nick, what are you drinking over there? As you're smelling it, you're going a little like. <laughs> um, I'm sticking to the west side a little bit. Well, our west side. Um, I got Liv- Ellison. Livonia? Yeah. Livonia. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I got Ellison, Ellison Brewing uh, Crescent Fresh IPA. And then after I finish that, sticking with the IPAs, a Relativity Double IPA. Go. Nice. You have fun. <laughs> Wendy, what are you drinking? <laughs> so I have amazing beer friends that go and get me beer at releases and I've got a odd side ales. I think it's Bay's vanilla. It's, it's spelled all fancy in French and stuff. 
but it is an imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels with raspberries and vanilla. It sounds like one of those things to where... really big bottle that had a... It was not waxed, and I was able to just get it off with the opener, but it's also got the... Cork to keep it fresh later. all tonight. You don't have to, but you should. I might. But... You, probably, you, you might. Rob, Rob, did I see you drinking some TD over there? Uh, I'm going a little harder than, than I guess normal right now because basically I broke out the, the Bruise Brothers bottle uh, of Buffalo, Buffalo Trace. Trace. So the, the single barrel on that sucker. Shout out to the Bruise Brothers for the culture. And hopefully we'll be picking a, a new barrel sometime uh, this year so that we can get another one of those. After that, I'm going to follow that up with a little bit of Griffin Claw with the Special Reserve Flying Buffalo, uh, which is their uh, Barrel Age Imperial Stout, which was Barrel Age twice, uh, Barrel Age for 10 months in bourbon barrels, and then Barrel Age for four months in rye whiskey barrels. That sounds like the uh, the exhibit of beers. I heard you like barrel aging, so I barrel aged your barrel age. <laughs> Yo, dog. I heard you like barrel aged beers. Dan, what do you got over there? <laughs> oh, I'm being basic as hell right now. I'm drinking a 90 shilling from Odell. That's all right. And uh, Eric, are you basic. still are you still milking that tapeworm? <laughs> <laughs> you muted. You're muted somehow. There he is. <laughs> there we go. I <laughs> just turned that microphone on real quick. I've done that a few times. Uh, yeah. So now I got another one, man. This is uh, this is. I don't know, man. This one blows me away. So this is uh, this is a blueberry sour by College Street. This one is widely available across the state. Like you, across you your state, across, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, across the state of Arizona. Um, normally, a canned sour or like a kettle sour. I, I love wild ales. I like you know spontaneous fermentation. You know those type of sours. But kettle sours usually not so much. This one's fantastic, man. This is uh, I don't even know how to say it. Beer guard regard by College all their Street. beers are weirdly named like that or at least some of them are so yeah. to figure out how to say it i'm yeah. uh i'm finishing up arbuckle cold brew coffee stout from midland brewing company and uh the beer that i really want dan to try one day one day and that is the milkshake mint ipa from nope. broke brewing yes oh, you can keep no. dan no, mint? Come on. Dan, is it the mint? Is it the mint? No, it's a milkshake and IPA. No, milk and uh, IP doesn't belong together. No. <laughs> I mean, a lot of things don't belong together, but people put them in beers. Let's still do it. So we were talking. We were talking about the the craft the yeah. craft marshmallows that you have. Uh, within you, like, how much is a bottle of those beers? Because I wanna I wanna kind of bring up a, a fun little story that a lot of local people know, but it's just gonna blow your mind. You, you, were you asking me? Yeah. Yeah, so I I don't quite remember. I think they were like twenty dollars a four pack. So they were sixteen ounce four packs of a of a marshmallow IPA. Let me see if I can if I can find it. So but, these uh, so there there was a brewery here called Drafting Table, and they had a beer called Malo. Um, and this oh beer boy. this beer I think went for sixteen dollars for a twenty three ounce. Um, which is standard, a nice little price, a little hefty, but I mean it's a high ABV. They used actual marshmallows, so you have to like clean the um, the thing like two or three times just to get all of that fucking uh, shit out. But on the secondary market, these beers went for upwards of a Nintendo Switch. What kind of beer was it? What style? Barrel aged uh, Imperial Stout with marshmallow. Oh, geez. Yep. You know who makes an amazing marshmallow stout is Rickety Cricket out of Kingman. Easily really? one of the best marshmallow beers. Wow. It's the only mark. It's probably the first one I ever had, but no one's ever made something like that. I highly doubt I've they're going for the hi, probably not going for the cost of a switch. <laughs> so I asked is, is I nuts. asked everyone in the uh, the chat what they are drinking. A lot of people have been talking about it uh, earlier in the chat. We'll just kind of go over. Um, we've got uh, Tito saying he's drinking the Griffin Claw Bourbon Barrel Three Scrooges. Uh, Samantha is saying shorts, local light, taking it easy. Um, Gregory Feltner, scotch barrel abyss. It's been sitting around too long. Um, so a lot of people are drinking. I see a little, uh, rail town brewings, good mood. Uh, M O O E D pun fully, uh, on force. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a beer that I would have. Um, 
I don't know. I love well, Dan. You don't like milk IPAs, but do you like mil- you like milk stouts? Obviously, you like milkshake. I do. Yeah, I mean, I was drinking the Moonraker. This is a uh, milk stout. Lactose. No, IPAs are terrible. I can't stand them. I mean, I, I I agree <laughs> with that sentence, but. And the only thing that pops into my mind when we're talking about that is pouring like a cup of milk into an IPA and just, <laughs> oh, no, I God. can't get past that. Yeah. That's <laughs> an extreme that iteration of that. Like yeah, yeah. That's what I picture with that. So I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I, so I, here's the thing. <laughs> Oh, sorry, go ahead. Someone else no. was going to say something. I don't have all of my information in line just yet. So. Go. <laughs> go on, Eric. I spent years training myself to like IPAs. I've tried so hard. I remember, so prior to like the, like you could go, like this is when you had to go to a brewery to buy a ticket to the Brewers Guild festivals. Um, and I remember spending an entire fall festival trying IPAs and literally had the worst festival I've ever had because I tried <laughs> so hard. Yeah. So I'm like, well, maybe it's different. And the thing is, is that I learned what kind of hops that I like mixed in with what kind of malts that I like. So as much as I like Centennial from, um, uh, what's that? Sam McGrell. Founder. Sam McGrell Rapids. Yeah. Sam McGrell Rapids. Or, found- no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Charlotte street brewing, Charlotte street brewing. <laughs> um, <laughs> So as much as I like that beer, I don't like Too Hearted, and it's the same hop build, but it's the malt build that I think is a lot, is what I care more about in an IPA than I do the hop build. So for this, like, Roke Brewing's Milkshake IPA, like, we had John Leone and Adam Lambert on, and this beer was just fucking amazing. And I'm I'm hoping that, I because I want to see the comeback story that is Dark Horse Brewing. Um, do you guys get Dark Horse out there? Not that I'm aware so. of. Uh-uh. Um, so Dark Horse was a major, major uh, craft brewery in the pre hardcore craft brewery eight. Like the, that's the kind of craft beer that you go find that you could probably potentially find at like a Seven Eleven. Like you got your your <laughs> your locals. You had basically Bell's founders and Dark Horse. Maybe one or two others, but that's what you're going to find at your local 7-Eleven. Um, now, I mean, you can find just about everything. Uh, so I'm hoping that Adam Lambert can help turn that around over at Dark Horse. Definitely go check out that episode um, with the Roke Dark Horse guys. Uh, it is an amazing episode. Really, really smart. And again, yes. one of those one of those episodes to where, like, you could tell it's – like the the reputation that Roke has, I think, is a little bit unfounded when you talk to these guys, because you're like, oh, these are not the kind of people that I kind of expected. Um, so uh, Matt Bush is saying, "Aren't you glad you're not Don Lewis by Chamex?" Um, Matt Bush, the, the, the iconic <laughs> Matt Bush. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Matt Matt's gonna be joining uh, us for uh, Quiplash and uh, during segment three. Um, but Eric, the the floor is yours. Give me something you want to talk about. Well, first of all, uh, that that beer that I was talking about, it is a pistachio milkshake IPA. That the, the, the t- just for you. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so I, I'm looking at Arizona Wilderness's website, and it doesn't say like how much they were at that point, but they have pistachios and marshmallows. So pistachios are like expensive as fuck, right? So sounds mm-hmm. delicious to me. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's I'd good. be all over that. It's a depending great on what kind it's, of hops are in there. Are they still making sweet. this beer? Uh, it's it's like a, they did it for their sixth anniversary in August. Um, so I think they do no. it periodically, kind of like where Arizona Wilderness does. They have a few flagships, but Otherwise, it's it, whatever the fuck they want to, uh, you know. What, great. See, it'd be it'd but, be uh, worth to try too. It's it, interesting. It, it, it's, I'll give it's them a, credit. Sure. They make a lot of saisons, more than at least at the downtown brewery, more yeah. than you see for most places. So mm-hmm. it's a pretty good yeah. place to check out. Are you guys? Do you guys get Jolly yeah. Pumpkin out there, Dan? Not that I don't. I'm aware of. Do well, we? Yeah. Okay. I'm we, sure we started they do. to. Yeah. <laughs> we get. I know. 43. I know. Oh wow. Um, yeah. I know 
Well, this, so that was the thing is, is that let's let's talk about it. That was only a year, a little over a year ago. We were talking about New England IPAs. We had the the Dolphin Sitter or whatever from Tempe Beer Co. That was pretty Desert, good. Desert Dolphin. Oh, Desert, Desert Dolphin. Dolphin. Yeah. I mean, I got the Dolphin part right. That was the the important <laughs> part. Um, but I, I was talking about M forty three and like just how crazy it has been here in Michigan and how and it started to slowly build into Arizona over there. Are you guys? Full in on the New England IPA right now, Eric. Yeah, yeah. I, a lot I, of people it, love it. A lot of people love it, man. And and it's kind of like that. Uh, it's it's that draw to the tap room, right? Where you've got like Goldwater with their hop chowda. They have a really really good hazy. Um, the shop, the shop is one of the ones that continue to push out uh, push out beers at this point, like almost weekly uh, beer releases and almost anything that they do is is a hazy ipa or they do fruited sours as well so i yeah. loved people I line loved up the... for all those oh yeah yeah yep. still still yeah I, I i remember going to the shop and i remember i loved all of their giant malt build beers like they, they had a yeah. coffee brown yeah like they yeah. they had such good non-ipa beers over there and what was yep. crazy is is that and you guys will be you know a little bit different but the price points for beers over there in tempe were a lot different than they are out here in michigan like you're talking new england ipa pints for like four bucks as if it's just right Damn. off the like you could get it and Where that's were you where the fuck were you, Ken? Because I was, need to that was shot. There. <laughs> <laughs> he well, wasn't that, at Kings, that's for sure. <laughs> that 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 was at the shop beer co. Because I remember yeah. live during the show, they were talking about, "Whoa, is our price point too low?" Yeah. In the middle of the show, and I'm like, "Well, maybe." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, those guys, those guys were cool because they came from coffee. So Cartel Coffee is is one of the uh, one of the local G's of like craft coffee. Um, so they started brewing in the back of the coffee shop. And they just made rules. so then they they branched off and started the shop. So that that was cool that you said that, Ken, because I always tell people if you're at the shop, first of all, their hazies are great, their fruited sours are great. But if there's coffee in it, get it because mm-hmm. it's not gonna be that it's not gonna be that vanilla latte coffee that you get sometimes of like that's not fucking coffee, that's a Starbucks, right? So the 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 head brewer at the shop understands like the extraction of, of coffee. So when you drink a coffee beer from the shop, it tastes like really good, high quality coffee, not just some, you know, Folgers like, oh yeah, with some <laughs> vanilla syrup, right? So it's, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's a little secret of go to the shop. If there's a coffee beer, get it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So while um, I believe this was, so literally while we were recording that show at the shop beer co., um, you guys were actually over in, uh, I think you were in Detroit with Paw Paw Brewing. Paw Paw Brewing was in town talking uh, to you guys with Donovan. Um, yes. So we, Dan and I were doing a show. We were literally, watching it, actually. Yeah, we were watching it as we were doing it. <laughs> Definitely go check that out. That's episode 163.5. Um, and then, of course, you have a episode with uh, Eric, which is 164.5. Um, and that's the Tap That AZ episode that was in February. Uh, I mean, we recorded it in January. January, but it was in February when we posted it. Um, yeah, it was one of the last episodes of Music Town. Uh, yeah, oh, that was yeah. that was a while ago. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we actually did an episode with Zane Lamprey right after that, and I know you guys just did an episode with Zane. How was that for you? Yeah, oh, dude, it was great. So I did a, I did an episode with Zane. So about a year and a half ago, I met uh, Jack Maxwell from Booze Traveler. Um, just always been a big fan of him. And I just randomly reached out on like Instagram because I knew he's, he's in, he stays in Phoenix. He had a uh, non hop on Hopkins, Hodgkin's lymphoma. So he was in, in Phoenix with family getting treatments. So I just ran, I think I was buzzed up one day. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to reach out to Jack Maxwell. <laughs> like, Dude, let's grab a beer when you're feeling better. And next day I get a message like, yeah, absolutely, man, let's do it. So I met him in a brewery, um, became really good friends and he knows Zane Lamprey really well. So, I'm like, dude, like, I love you, Jack, and I love your show, but Zane is, like, the fucking man. Like, you know, he's, he's the dude. Uh, so I got connected with him a few months ago, and it was cool because we did an episode at a Best Western in Scottsdale. It was Jack Max and John Buford, the founders of the wilderness, 11 o'clock on, like, a Sunday, like, a you know, 
like the morning after like a major you know, like <laughs> it wasn't really the case we all got good sleep that the night before but it was it was you know, like who does a, a podcast the best western uh but it was great yeah zane zane was awesome um and then like two weeks ago with you know with all this stuff uh, i i've with, with tap that az I've, I've done we've done a really good job of establishing ourselves within the community from an in-person standpoint, right? I've always kind of looked at social media as kind of just a pain in the ass, secondary, like, fuck it. Like we're Arizona, like we're, we're local. I don't have to get my message out to New York. I don't have to like, we're, we're all about Arizona, um, which, which was real stupid for me to say now in hindsight. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everything was focused on the in-person interaction, building that network. And now when all this happened, that all went away. So now it's like, Oh shit, we got to get digital with this. We have to, you know, we have to, so I started doing Instagram lives every Wednesday from, um, from six to seven 30. I call it the happy hour and a half. Uh, <laughs> it's just a little, little quote in parentheses <laughs> and a half. Yeah, um, and I get local, get some local people, some breweries, uh, had a local musician on, uh, two nights ago, uh, Zane Lamprey joined in and he was awesome. Like he was, he was a really good guest. So just trying to, you know, uh, put myself in uncomfortable situations <laughs> due to <laughs> due to the shit that we have to do at this point, you know. Yep. So, um, yeah, Zane was Zane was awesome, man. Um, so, yeah, it, it really opens up a lot of doors, right? Because everything that I've done up to this point has has taken travel, right? If it's like, all right, I want to do a podcast with Tombstone Brewing Company, I gotta fucking drive three hours to Tombstone, <laughs> you know, and. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dan will tell you that that's, you know, Rob, I don't know if you've ever been down that for, far in the state, but um, not that far. It gets <laughs> sketchy, man. It gets it's, sketchy. It's, it's really weird down there. I'm not even going to pretend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the closer the closer you get to the border, the, clo the more you realize you're close to the border. You got to drive you know. through a Homeland Security checkpoint in the oh. U.S. to get to Tombstone. I, oh. Don't don't get me wrong. <laughs> Tombstone is one of my favorite Westerns of all time, but my ass yeah. don't want to go there. <laughs> no, no. Rob, have somebody now I feel like I need beer. to add Arizona to my it. travel list. Oh. Yeah. Wendy, I tell you what, it's it's awesome out here. There's 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 so many things to do in between breweries because we're at like 110 uh, at this point. But I, I feel it's it's almost like what I describe to people as as Phoenix is. It was a city that was built after everybody else fucked up shit. Meaning like mm -hmm. like infrastructure, <laughs> road structure, everything. Everything's new here. Yeah, it's really great. It is, dude. Like it's like you know you've got the you've got loops, right? The highways are loops, so you can just drive around in a loop, and then there's smaller loops within. So no matter where you live, like we're we're up north, but I can just jump on the freeway five minutes, and I'm on a loop, and boom, straight shot. Um, but, but still, nobody knows how to drive out there when it rains. Uh, no, no, they do. Yeah. Everyone just drives 110 when they're out here, though. So. <laughs> it's yeah. like it it, it yeah. rains it yeah. rains out there, and everybody drives like it's the first snow. Oh it's yeah, just, it's ridiculous. People put their hazards on on the side of the freeway. I'm like, dude, it's, <laughs> oh, we've had a quarter of inch inch of accumulation. Come on, man. <laughs> I used to use my emergency brake as a brake in Ohio, like just to turn some corners, <laughs> drifting. Shit, you know? oh. <laughs> uh, but I guess to kind of summarize what's going on here right now, it's it's really badass to see uh, because uh, they're over the years like and i'm sure it's the same in michigan and i'm sure it's the same in other states but there's been layers of of legislative things that have had to happen in order to allow breweries to to grow and to do what they what they need to do to, to sustain themselves um so now like the whole draw of a brewery and, and i'm sure you guys would agree with this is like being close right you go into a you go into true in denver and it's a long long ass table you're sitting next to people that you're forced to talk with them and that's a cool thing about it well guess what now like people are like i don't want to be within fucking six feet of anybody <laughs> you know so so that whole draw of a tap room is is in jeopardy at this point so these guys are stepping up dude there are breweries that are driving two three hours to drop off their cans to three or four different bottle shops you know and then driving three hours back home Talk about dark sky yeah, 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 dude, those guys are all over the place. But yep. this is this is kind of what I say and what I love about craft beer. So I grew up, uh, you know, in a in hardcore blue collar working class, but I always had this creative uh, streak about me. So when I found craft beer, I'm like, that's it. Like that's 
like you have to be creative. You have to be innovative, but you also have to be blue collar. You have to fucking work your ass off to execute that, those recipes and execute those recipes on a consistent basis. So I think, and, and a lot of these breweries and, and I assume it's the same in Michigan, these guys left shit that they hated, right? Myself included. Like I, I was 10 years in call center jobs. I quit that to be able to, to create this beer media company because uh, I, I love to do it. These breweries are the same way. They were, you know, they were franchisee uh, managers. They were IT guys. They were this or that. And they were like, I'm sick of it. I want to do what the fuck I want to do. So to me, that gives an extra fire. These guys are going to do whatever they need to do to, to stay relevant, to stay in business, to survive this. So it's, it's awesome, man. It, it's pretty cool to see that that uh drive and that fight in in humans well you see that like you know for example uh kevin de who is the owner of north center brewing over in northville michigan just south of baseline road over on north center road uh thank you very much (laughs) um you know he was working for a car company for a while until he could you know make enough to make a living so he was double dipping in regards to like he was basically using his wages at a car company to um you know make his his beer brewing dream come true or brewing problem depending on who you ask (laughs) so you know this this whole change you know they they were planning on moving i have no idea what their move is i haven't talked to them for a minute um in regards to what's going on like the the one thing is is that um you know they're they're a sponsor of our show but i'll be honest with you i literally texted them and i said don't fucking pay me I said, I don't need your money. Your your staff needs your money. Your staff needs your work. Your staff needs all that stuff. And, you know, we don't charge that much anyways for sponsorships. But again, it's one of those things where I'm like, all right, you you get – because I want you to pay me money in six months. So yeah. I don't want to have like, to try you're to – still paying me. Like, don't, let's not let's not get that. You're going to still pay me. Just not well, now. Like, it's, it's, well, it's, no. Like, uh, we, we, we have – I'm not, I'm not adding money. I just said, like, it's just yeah. – it, you just don't owe me anything. And then when, when we come out of the other side, then we can start paying me again. Yeah, but until – We're talking about Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we're here. And I, I'm curious how – how is your guys' breweries – brewing distilleries um how are they reacting to covid are they doing a lot more um deliveries are they doing curbside only um drive through like what's going on over there well kind of their station has a drive through that kind of impressed me well, what was that Dan? Badass. yeah it really is it's pretty cool it's an old fire station so walter station is an old fire station so They just popped open the doors on both ends. So it used to be just you pop the doors open and it could be like, you know, picnic table seating and stuff like that. Now it's a drive through. It's it's pretty cool. There's a lot of innovation out here, Dan. Right. You're seeing a lot of a lot of people doing doing whatever they need to do. So there was um, I've gotten conflicting information about this. So the the popular, the most common explanation of this is breweries couldn't do curbside pickup they couldn't do delivery um i talked to a brewery they're like dude we could have done that the whole time nobody just knew like the infrastructure of it but but the arizona craft brewers guild um they they're really good at uh the legislative side of things so they're, they're really good they're not they're not i don't know if it's confusion as far as what people expect from them but they're not really a marketing they're not marketing all 110 breweries they're not you know they're not doing that but they're doing they're playing their part to create um really the waves that are needed to, to make legislative changes right so so they worked really closely with the like the governor and the, like the Arizona Restaurant Association to be like clarify like hey if we start doing deliver are we going to get shut down like what like we need clarification. So the guild was really good about, all right, here's, here's what you guys need to do. Here's, you know, and there are places like Arizona wilderness, Arizona wilderness is all about, you know, sustainability and using like Arizona grass, you know, grass raised beef. And they're like, dude, we'll never do fucking Uber eats. We'll never do Uber eats. And then I talked to them like two days into it. They're like, we're doing fucking Uber eats. (laughs) Yeah. I ran into another restaurant not wanting to do that. And it was a shit show. And then all of a sudden they're on there now. Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, I'll say this. Hold on. I got, I got to come in just because I know (laughs) the, the, the the one, as much as I've been doing this for 215 plus episodes, the restaurant industry, I'm very in tuned of. If you guys have the opportunity to do a 
uh, delivery based on the company's website versus Uber Eats, please do it on their website as opposed to Uber oh, yeah. Eats. Um, the reason for that is, is that Uber Eats, uh, Grubhub, DoorDash, whatever the fuck, takes like 30%. Oh, my God. That's, that's three zero thirty. 30 so we'll just say well, one really third. Cost so much more. Um, yep. So yeah, so a lot of a lot of companies uh, build that into their prices of their food when they do Grubhub's. Not everyone does. Um, so if you see a restaurant, if you're trolling through Grubhub on your phone, you're like, you know, hey, uh, I want to order from here. Hey, let me make sure that they do not have their own online ordering before I order. Again, yeah. that's thirty yeah. percent, and when we're talking with slim as fuck margins right now, um, yeah. especially for the restaurant industry, restaurant industry is mm -hmm. down eighty percent, eighty to eighty-five percent as a whole. Yeah. And so, the, uh, go on, Wendy. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, I so I ordered mod pizza the other day, and I ordered from their website, but it was um, an Uber Eats delivery person that brought it to me. It was really weird. Yep. So a lot of those restaurants deal with some type of, excuse me, third party aggregator that might be Chowley or Olo, um, which then take where you order from their website out. Um, so again, you're dealing with a lot less, um, a lot less cut that they're taking, even if you go right from their website. Um, taking it straight from the app, straight from Uber Eats, Grubhub, et cetera. Like that's, that's the thing. And I'll, I don't, I don't want to get on my high horse too much, but again, <laughs> it's an industry that I care about. It's an industry that fired me, um, <laughs> laid me off. Let's be proper. Here. Off. Um, they still yeah. love you, dude. They still love you. It's, they're, it's they're, an industry, yeah. <laughs> but, but again, like if, if I want to get back into it, if I want to take that skilled trade that I've learned for the last five years and, apply it later like i need them to exist later so make sure that you're ordering straight from either their website or their app um and you'll you'll help them out a lot again use uber eats grubhub and stuff last resort um you know if you see those restaurants on them just be like all right let's let me i want to go uh, i think you were talking or somebody was talking about or i think i was on another call um they were eating chinese food earlier today now that Coming i realize this, this is my third zoom call today <laughs> And I don't even work anymore. Um, <laughs> drinking since like since nine a.m. Yeah. Nice work, man. Nice four, work, yeah. just just four. Um, I guess I'm glad I'm not, I'm not the only one who's had more than three, at least three. Ah, yeah. I, I, this is my fourth today. Uh, I'm on number four. I, I mean, so. I had six yesterday. I was gonna say I'm on two. Damn, happy Thursday. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> All you right. Made me feel bad last week about a third. <laughs> Um, guys, better on draft 215 is technically in the books. Those of you listening to the podcast, it's over. But again, this show is not over. We are going to continue. We're going to play some quiplash. You guys can join this. Um, you guys can join the audience. There's going to be, uh, potentially one or two spots that you're going to be able to join us live. If you want to join us live, reach out to us better on draft at gmail.com. Um, but we're going to take a quick break about uh, eight minutes or so. Reset. Get your drinks. Use the restroom. Um, get your cell phones. Eric, yep. you're welcome to stay if you want to. If not, tap that uh, az.com is the website. It's about to get a little racist up in here, but I'm in. I'm in. I was <laughs> before that. I was no. That was Dan. No, it that was not really bad. We're not gonna lie. I'm gonna have everyone, <laughs> everyone mute Coming themselves. From the state that took was the last one to start celebrating MLK Day. I, I don't we canceled less. it at one point, man. We canceled it. <laughs> we're oh my we're, I, we're I, gonna I mute. Say I don't mute. 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 Sure you yeah. have your papers when you come out here. That's all I'm saying. We're gonna mute, except mute it. We're gonna mute except for Rob because Rob's got to do his piece. And no matter what right. you think of your beer, we think it's <gasps> better on draft. Have a good night. We'll see you in segment three at facebook.com forward slash better on draft. Peace.